What's up, y'all? In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of domain and range by looking at some specific functions and seeing how can we analyze these functions to find the domain and range. Let's get to it. So here we're being told to state the domain and range of these following functions. It looks like we've got a quadratic function here. I see that with our squared value. And we've got a square root function and we've got this thing. Oh gosh, that's, a, that's called a rational function. But before we get to this, let's get to our first one. Let's go to our quadratic. So um, if you recall, this is our vertex form of our quadratic. And our vertex form basically tells us where the minimum or the maximum value is. Uh, we know that because this is positive out here, it's going to be a, a quadratic that's going to be opening upwards. And we know because this is our vertex that it's going to have shifted around somewhere on our xy axis. Since we know that this thing is going to be opening up like this, and our vertex is going to be at 1, 3. Ah, if you thought I was going to say negative 1 there, you may want to take a moment and pop over to our quadratics videos and do a little bit of a refresher with the vertex form and why that's not a, a negative 1 and why it is a positive 1. So we've got our vertex being at 1, 3, so that means our x values are going to be everything that goes out uh, in either direction, right? It's never going to stop uh, our x values, so we know that x is an element of all real numbers, or you could just say x uh, is all real numbers, our domain is all real numbers. The y value, uh, since it's starting at three, three is our lowest value, it's gonna be everything bigger than that. So y is gonna be greater than or equal to three. Now, this one, the square root of x minus four. Okay, so for this, what we have to do is we have to think about what happens in a square root function. What values can we put into a square root that we can get out an actual number. I know that I can't have any negative numbers in here. So I can't have a negative 10 because negative 10 minus four, negative 14, I can't take a square root of a negative number. So it has to be everything positive. So my X values that I have to have would have to be, uh, I couldn't have three in here because three minus four is going to be a negative number. So I can do four because four minus four is zero and the square root of zero is zero. So I'm starting at four and I'm getting everything bigger than that. So X is going to be bigger than or equal to, greater than or equal to four. And that's going to give me uh, all the X values that I can put into this function. Anything less than that is going to give me negative values, which is not doable with a square root at least not in the real number system, which again is what we work with in uh, the standard level IB course. Now, what kind of results are we gonna get if we put in four or five or six or 7.2 or any other number that is greater than or equal to four? Well, it's always gonna spit out a positive value, right? It's always gonna be, it's gonna be at zero or it's gonna be something positive because we can't have any negative outputs from a square root. So that just means that y is going to be greater than or equal to zero. So you kind of have to do a little bit of analysis of what's happening with this actual function in order to uh, find the domain and range. You're not necessarily expected to, to know how to graph every single one of these functions, but you are going to have to have some knowledge of what can go in and what, can, what will be spit out. Now our last one, oof, this thing is called a rational function. And if you're not familiar with rational functions, make sure you check out our rational functions video when you're done with this. So again, as we are analyzing this, we're trying to figure out what values can we put into our X here. And let's see, I could put in a negative five, uh, ne a negative five plus three, that's a negative two. I can have negative one half from this. I could put in 10, uh, one thirteenth, that, uh, one over 13, that's okay. But if you recall, you can never have a zero in your denominator. That's an undefined function. So in this case, x cannot be negative three. You could say x is all real numbers except for negative three. You could do the inequalities where you're doing uh, greater than negative three and less than negative three, but you're not including negative three. But really the most simple way is just saying, x does not equal negative three. That implies all that, uh, that everything else does work. Now, what about our y value? When we spit out all of the different possible x values in here, we can really get anything out except for zero. If you've got a really big denominator, 
in a small numerator, you're getting closer to zero. So let's say one over uh, x is 10,000 plus three. Well, one over 10,003 is going to be approximately zero. And it's going to be a positive value. If we put in a really big negative number, so maybe negative 10,000 plus three, then we're going to have one over negative 9,997. Uh, 9, and what that means is we've got a really small number, a number that's really close to zero, but it's coming up from the negative side. That's why we say it's approximately zero positive or approximately zero negative because it's approaching from those directions. But what's going to happen is it's y is never going to get to zero itself. So in this case, we would just say y does not equal zero. And again, we'll get into some of the mechanics of why that is in our rational functions video. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, make sure you give me a thumbs up, like the video, spread it out to the YouTube uh, universe, and I'll catch you in the next video.